Hey guys, how's it going? I wanted to talk about Databricks' new model that they've released this week. And I want to talk about it because its performance is very high and they've released how they've made it, which I think is super interesting. And I want to walk you through the architecture, how it works, its pros and cons, and then I'll show you how to run inference on it and what you're going to need as well. So let me walk you through the architecture first. It is a mixture of experts, similar to Mistral's mixture of experts. This one has 132 billion parameters and 36 billion of those parameters are active for each request. It's trained on 12 trillion tokens. For context, that's about like 45 billion pages of text. And Llama 2 was trained on 2 trillion. And allegedly, GPT-4 was trained on 13 trillion tokens. So this is kind of near the GPT-4 amount of tokens. The context window for this is 32K. And it has 16 experts. And it chooses four of those experts during inference. And for comparison, Mistral's mixture of experts uh, uses eight, and so does Grok. And they only have two at inference. So it's basically half of this. And allegedly, again, GPT-4 has something similar. They have 16 experts and they choose two at inference. So you can see that this is sort of between the architecture of Mistral and GPT-4 allegedly. So we'll go into that because the performance kind of lines up in terms of open source on the evals they've done. This is one of the best performing models. It's way better at programming than a lot of the other open source models like Llama and Mixtral. And for running Inference on it and Hugging Face, I find that to match up as well. It's quite good. And I'd highly recommend you check it out. In terms of the closed source models like GPT 3.5 and GPT 4, this model, ZBRX Instruct, is right in between GPT 3.5 and GPT 4 in terms of performance. So it's exciting because we're getting close to an open source equivalent of GPT 4. And I can put that there. And how the model was made is it was trained on 3,072 H100s for two months. The compute cost for this roughly works out to between 11 and $15 million. And for context, GPT-4 allegedly was trained with A100s and way more. And the cost for that ended up being allegedly around $60 million. So we're getting close here. I want to summarize here that we're very close to a GPT-4 equivalent of an open source model. I think it will probably be around in less than two years if we can extrapolate with Moore's law or Jensen Huang's law, whichever one you prefer. Basically. We're just going to get more compute for cheaper, which is what we need to achieve that performance uh, of a GPT-4 equivalent. And something to take away from this is mixture of experts seems to be an increasingly popular research area and a direction that people are going into. And it's interesting that the higher performing LLM so far, GPT-4 and this one, have more uh, experts 16 versus eight. So I think that's interesting to consider. There are some downsides of this mixture of experts architecture. It's much more difficult to run inference on and expensive. You need four a 100s just to run inference on this. So you're probably looking at, at a minimum, uh, $3,000 per month. And that's at the lowest end of the rates for a 100s. So it's, it's very expensive if you wanted to host this yourself and run it. But likely, if you want to play around with it, we can do so on Hugging Faces. They have a hosted endpoint for you. And it's actually very snappy and fast. So let's just ask it, write a Python scraper to scrape <laughs> Hugging Face. Let's see if it does this. It'd be funny if this works. Okay, this is probably wrong, to be honest. I mean, we'd have to test this out. But it looks close enough. The reason why I say it might be wrong is just because of this class. But the point is, I mean, this is kind of cool that it just gave it to us. And I think if we played around with this, we could get something. Some other examples I've run on this for like working with arrays and objects and basic Python and JS stuff, it works really well. But yeah, check it out. You can play around with it here. I'll put the URL to this in the, in the description. 
And uh, yeah, let me know what you think. I think this is one of the, I think it's probably the best open source model we have right now. And we're getting pretty close to GPT-4, the GPT-4 open source equivalent. So I think it's really exciting. Let me know what you think. And if you have any questions, put them in the comments below. Thanks so much. Bye.